Welcome to the channel. This video is for anyone who likes fast cars to go faster, sound meaner, and be more fun. Take a deep breath in through the mouth, out through the nose. Your internal combustion car breathes in a similar way, in through the air filter and out through the exhaust. When there's something blocking the exhaust's flow, it can inhibit your car's breathing. When your nose is restricted, you have your options for clearing the path. When I got my car from the factory, a 2019 Mustang GT convertible, the exhaust had catalytic converters, which I do believe help the environment, but it also has a metal box that interrupts the exhaust to make the car quieter. They call it a resonator. Mustang enthusiasts call it the suitcase. I call it the booger box, and today we're going to pick it out so my car can breathe more freely. The process we'll be doing is easy. Remove the factory booger box, I mean resonator, then we will insert a short assembly of exhaust tubing to rejoin the parts we removed. This fixture is called a resonator delete. Your main choices are the type of material. I chose one from Steeda made of 304 stainless steel, which should hold up better over time than 409 stainless. In addition to bridging the gap left by removing the resonator, the pipe adds tonal character or an exhaust note to the sound of your car. These pipe assemblies are generally divided into two categories, X pipes and H pipes. The X stands for extreme. The H stands for hell yeah. So I went for the H. Seriously, the X and H actually refer to the general shape of where the two exhaust paths join, and each shape has its own tonal character. I'll put a link to a Steeda video in the description where you can hear the difference between these two styles. Even if you're not planning on modifying your own car, hopefully this video will give you some techniques that you can apply when working on your next project. If you're just here to experience the before and after exhaust rumble, there's hi-fi stereo sound clips after the installation. And if you like this kind of video, then please give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and please leave your comments and recommendations below. This kit came with two stainless steel clamps. I'll use a short 18 tooth per inch metal cutting blade in a reciprocating saw. You'll want thick work gloves. My secret weapon for this project will be two inexpensive lashing straps, link in the description. I love those things. Safety goggles, various wrenches, sockets, and an impact driver, and a sharpie or tape for marking where to cut. I'm going to work on jack stands. Having a lift would be preferable but isn't necessary. Make sure you're safe and that you have extra support in case the jack stands fail. I have steeded jacking rails on the car, which let you lift the entire side of the car at its midpoint. If you don't, then I recommend lifting the back and then the front of the car, always checking and adjusting your supports as you go. Once my car was up, I raised the back higher for better access and slid in ramps as an extra safety measure. When you're looking from the back of the car, here's the resonator. Here's the clamps we're going to loosen and reuse. And here's where we need to cut the factory exhaust. The instructions say to hold the H-pipe flush with the front of the original equipment resonator so you can mark where to cut. They recommend having two people do this to ensure the accuracy of the cut. I found this awkward and since I was committed to working solo, I devised my own method. Using two inexpensive lashing straps, I made a cradle to hold the H-pipe in place so I could easily line it up and mark where to cut. You want to make sure the logo is facing the floor and toward the back of the car, and that the pipe with the slight bend is on the passenger side.
I overlap the H-pipe about an inch and three quarters into the clamp, or just under halfway, to give me plenty to grab onto. With the front to back adjustment secured, I double check the side to side alignment and then tighten the strap securely. When you're aligned, mark the exhaust where the back of the resonator delete pipes stop. I'm making a mark with a sharpie, and then I'll use masking tape to transfer that point to a straight line. Make sure you're looking straight on, and that you place the tape exactly perpendicular to the pipe you'll be cutting. Now grab that sharpie and mark what side of the tape your cut line is with arrows. It's easy to forget or get turned around, and you don't want to cut on the wrong line. You can now put your resonator delete pipe aside and get ready for cutting. I'm going to use the lashing straps now to provide support for the exhaust, so when it's cut it doesn't fall down and clock me in the face. Since the drive shaft is centered above the resonator and tailpipes, it makes the perfect anchor point for the straps. Now loosen the clamps holding the resonator to the front of the exhaust. You just want to loosen them a little bit at this time. It's time to cut. When I start cutting, I fully expect metal bits, exhaust deposits, or nasty muck to be getting in my face. So I'm wearing safety goggles and a mask so I don't ingest any metal dust or whatever might be lurking in those pipes. Better safe than sorry. I should mention that this exhaust system is completely stock, with catalytic converters and factory active exhaust, which has four switchable exhaust sounds from quiet to track. That is crazy loud. I'll put a link to my video that tells more about the active exhaust. I love all the different tones, and I hope this H-pipe adds volume and a deeper bass note to the sound of the car. I wasn't expecting the rear part of the exhaust to drop like it did when I cut it, so I'm going to add a lashing strap to hold it in place for the next cut. This will also help me when I'm aligning the H-pipe to install it. I recommend cutting the pipe from the inside to the outside. I was glad I chose a short blade for the reciprocating saw because the foil gas tank heat shield is right above the exhaust and I accidentally bumped it a few times with the tip of the saw. I didn't damage it, but I could see how a longer saw blade could definitely get you in trouble. While exhaust modifications are quite popular here in the United States, there's been a lot of news lately about the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency cracking down on people or companies that modify new vehicles, especially those who change the tuning or exhaust. I don't expect my resonator delete to have any effect on my car's emissions or its warranty, but I feel it's important for you to know your local or national rules or warranty terms before you make any modifications. That's really heavy. Since this installation simply bolts on, it will be easy to reverse if necessary for any reason. So there we go, the resonator is out. Let's see what the weight difference is between these two. Bring it over to the health meter scale. We're zeroed out. And the replacement pipe looks like it weighs in at, what would you say, seven pounds? I'm going to call that seven pounds. Definitely weighs more.
With the pipes cut and deburred, it's time to bolt the H pipe into place. With the new clamps slid all the way onto the back part of the H pipe, slide the front into the factory clamps. And then slide the new back clamps into place. I chose to attach the new clamps so the bolts are both in the center of the car. I realized once I had started that I had oriented the bolts on one side up and the other side down. I think I may redo that clamp at a later time so I don't have the longer thread end sticking down. You'll want to loosely tighten the front and back clamps so the resonator delete pipe stays in place but you can still move it around a bit. You are going to need to adjust your mufflers and exhaust tips to make sure that they are centered in the rear bumper and diffuser before giving all the clamps their final tightening. I need a wrench. I need a wrench. You'll need a wrench to hold the nut or bolt head that's on top while you tighten the bottom or else it will just spin and you won't be able to torque the clamps to their recommended 50 to 55 foot-pounds. It's a little awkward reaching between the pipes to hold the wrench in place. I was using an open-end wrench. A better plan would be to use a box wrench which won't slip off as easily. With everything tightened down and the car running, it's time to inspect your handiwork and make sure everything looks good and there are no exhaust leaks. When you bring your car back down to earth, you want to take your time and use the same caution that you used to raise it. Coming up next in the video is the part that I'm sure many of you have been waiting for, before and after sound clips. For the most part, I thought that went great. I'm a little sore from working directly on the garage floor, but I have a wonderful sense of satisfaction from doing it myself. The old part came out and the new part went in just like I had expected, and I really like the deep growl that's coming out of the back of the car now. 
For my driving impressions, make sure you come back soon. I'll be letting you know what I think and if the car feels faster in a future video. If you've made it until now, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you're the first to see my future videos. As always, I look forward to your comments and questions and suggestions in the space below. Be good, be well, and be safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I fixed it.